In this video we'll be taking a look at WinFS. This is something which I explored briefly in the video on Windows Longhorn build 4051 but I deliberately didn't go into much detail. That's because WinFS is actually a very very complicated um, piece of technology and I thought that in the video for build 4051 it would have taken quite a long time to have explained it well so I kept it very simple in that video. This video however we're going to be having a look at WinFS in a bit more detail. So for those of you that are interested in WinFS and what it's all about then I hope you enjoy this video. So four things that I'm going to be looking at are these. So firstly we're going to be very very simply just defining basically what WinFS actually is. We're then going to be thinking about what was the motivation for Microsoft to start developing WinFS. We're then going to move on and talk uh, briefly about how WinFS actually works and then we'll have a little think about what stage WinFS development is actually in today. So firstly, WinFS is basically it's a new file system. It's a new way of organizing files on a disk and it basically gives the operating system much better search capabilities and it gives applications greater access to different types of data that are on the disk and this is without the developers of the applications actually having to learn about the different types of data and how they work. So if you have seen clips of Bill Gates talking at the Professional Developers Conference 2003 hopefully you remember that he referred to WinFS as one of the pillars of Longhorn and he talked about three pillars um, Avalon being one of them WinFS being another and the third pillar being Indigo. So the reason WinFS was so important to Longhorn was the problems that traditional file systems have and traditional file systems like the NTFS file system that you get on modern versions of Windows they store files basically as a sequence of bytes and Windows itself doesn't really know much about what sort of data is in those files. It only knows what the files are called and what the file type is. Now traditionally it's always been the case that files have been organized on a hard disk into folders and folder names can provide an extra layer of detail about the file contents but still it doesn't give a very clear picture of the data that's actually in the files. So one way that Windows has kind of gotten around this problem is by using file formats or file types and file formats can help Windows identify what kind of data is in the file. So a JPEG file for example Windows will know by the file extension that it's a picture file. What that doesn't do however is actually give Windows information about what's actually in the picture. So it's still not a, an actual solution. So one consequence of this is that applications tend to use their own file formats and this causes a problem because it leads to data not being able to be easily shared between different programs and therefore it can become difficult for new developers especially to come up with programs that can actually read and write to multiple file types. So one workaround to this is to use common file formats so this is like different companies for example or different developers agreeing that their programs will be able to read and write certain file formats and sticking to that agreement. However something which is actually a lot better than this is using a standardized format such as XML. Now one of the really really big things that was really fundamental to WinFS is richer search. So as I've said traditional file systems like NTFS can search really only based on file names. Now recently Microsoft for example in Windows have started to build in a support for metadata or tags such as for example for mp3 files or WMA files you get data such as artist, title and album and the user can fill that in or it can be filled in for them and then the system can actually use that to perform more complicated searches. So you can search in Windows 7 for example for artists um, or for song titles if you use the tags in your files. Now more recently still Windows 7 for example 
can now search within certain file types using the knowledge that the system has about those file types. So docx files, for example, Windows 7 is able to actually go into those files, index the actual contents of the text in the files, and allow the user to search for the files based on the text inside them. However, one problem still remains with this approach. There are still no or very, very little relationships between different files, so between data. So a really good example of this is something like this. Imagine that I wanted to search on my Windows 7 machine for quite a complicated uh, piece of information. I want to know the phone numbers of all the people who live in London who each appear more than 10 times in my entire photo collection in my photos library with who I've had an email conversation with within the last month. And I apologize about the error, spelling error on there. So that kind of search is impossible using Windows 7 or Windows 8 search capabilities. I cannot do that. It's much, much too complicated for the system to actually work out what the answer is. So WinFS was developed for this sort of search to be able to actually happen and for users to be able to get this sort of information, really, really complex search results. So two main things and two keywords now that we need to know about when we talk about WinFS is firstly, WinFS, it organizes data on the hard drive in places that are very, very similar to the libraries in Windows Vista 7 and 8, and these are called stores. And the way WinFS populates the stores is when the user puts files or types of data onto the computer, WinFS can recognize different types of data and it calls these schemas. So for example, document would be one type, video would be another type, and contact would be another type. It can automatically recognize these different file types and based on what it detects the file types as, it can then put them into the appropriate store. So there will be a store for all my documents, there'll be a store for all my videos, there'll be a store for all my contacts. Now, another thing that OneFS does, and this is really more important than just what, what it does with the files, it actually allows relationships to form between different files. So for example, a document and a contact, which will be in different stores, can be connected by a created by relationship. So WinFS allows relationships to form between different files. So what that means is, it means by going through or following all these relationships, all the related data can be reached. And this leads to a, a critical feature of WinFS, which is this one. Any application can use the schemas to find out the structure of the data and utilize the information in the files. Now that might not be very clear the way that I've written that there, but if you just bear with me, I'll give you an example which might make this a little bit easier to understand. So all schemas and stores by default are accessible to all applications. For example, if I had a calendar application that was based on WinFS, what this calendar application could do is it could populate itself with all the photos that I took on certain dates, for example. It could populate itself with all the documents I created on certain dates, and it could populate itself with all the people I emailed and the meetings I'd scheduled to take place on different dates. Now, the app could do that without its developer actually having to know anything about all the different file types, so anything about JPEG files or DOCX files. It, the developer would not need to know about any of that, and they would not need to learn and write code that allowed their application to use those file types. That would all be handled by WinFS. All the application would have to do is use the schemas to access the different data types and WinFS would let the application use all of those different data types. So hopefully that clears up a little bit about what WinFS is about and why Bill Gates and Microsoft are really, really going for this idea. It's, as I've said, it's a really, really complicated piece of technology, but a really, really useful one that the more you learn about it, the more you realize how much you could do um, or how much we'd be missing basically without this. You know, we still haven't got it even today. And it's, it's a real shame actually, because it, it was way, way ahead of its time. 
Um, anyway, so let's have a quick look at what stage we're at with WinFS today. So let's just go back to where it actually came from. So WinFS actually, and you might find this very surprising, can be traced back all the way to the early 1990s and something called Object File System, which actually came in an unreleased version of Windows that Microsoft were working on at the time called Cairo. And between Cairo and Longhorn, WinFS um, has actually morphed and it's been planned and scrapped as different projects or within different projects at least three times. So the latest attempt with, well, actually I'll go back on that. It's not the latest attempt, but probably the um, most well-known attempt recently of um, this technology trying to be integrated in Microsoft products is with Longhorn. And this is what Bill Gates talked about at the PDC conference in 2003. So at the PDC conference 2003, developers were given access to an early build of Longhorn called build 4051. And this build actually had working WinFS in it, albeit with performance issues, but WinFS was present and usable. So what happened was when we get to about August 2004, which was just under a year after the PDC conference, Microsoft actually announced that WinFS would no longer be shipping with Longhorn. And instead, what would happen is Longhorn would come out and then WinFS would be um, an extra downloadable update on top of that. This went to plan and by August 2005, WinFS Beta 1 uh, for Windows XP, Service Pack 2 and higher had been made available to download for um, developers. And late 2006 would be the date when the second beta version uh, would come out and this would bring about some improvements to the platform. However, by June 2006 it was announced that WinFS had actually been scrapped and the technology within WinFS had been disaggregated into different Microsoft products. So this is basically a repeat of what had happened about three times already in the history of this technology. So. By November 2006, Steve Ballmer was noted as saying that WinFS was still being developed and would eventually reach consumers when the technology had been fully incubated. And last year, 2013, Bill Gates was interviewed and he actually cited WinFS as his greatest disappointment at Microsoft and he said that the idea um, as I mentioned, was was way ahead of its time, and that it will re-emerge at some point in the future. So that's I'm hoping cleared up a little bit, or given a little bit more detail about about WinFS, what it is, the reasons behind it, or the motivation behind why Microsoft are really going for this technology, and a little bit of extra detail on how it actually works. Please feel free to ask questions in the comments. Equally, please feel free to give any more information that you have about WinFS if you'd like to make a correction to the information I've given or you'd like to give a little bit more detail on something that I've mentioned in the video just for other people to know. That's absolutely fine. So yeah, hopefully that's been helpful to you and I will see you next time.